Hello everyone, welcome to Barca News. It is September 9th, 2023, and today we're gonna talk once again about the Enrique Slereda case because the media outlet Cronica Libre have released an article with the documents that Javier Tebas sent to the prosecutor's office, which contained false evidence accusing Barcelona of corruption. We have a lot to discuss, so let's begin. everyone welcome to the channel my name is Mo and before we begin with the news just a quick reminder to make sure to hit that like button especially on this video because liking the video prompts YouTube to recommend it to more and more people and people really need to see today's video so they know exactly what's going on in La Liga now having said that don't forget to subscribe and if you are looking for any Barcelona jerseys or merchandise make sure you hit the kit back if you are looking to place any sports bets make sure you hit to head to bet us both links are down below in the description. And now begin with the news that today the media outlet Cronica Libre have released an article detailing the false evidence that Javier Tebas presented to the prosecutor's office, encouraging them to investigate Barcelona for corruption. Now by now you already know that Barcelona are involved in the Enrique Esteireira case or Enrique Esteireira scandal, where it was discovered that Barcelona had hired the former referee Jose Maria Enriquez Neireira between the years 2001 till 2018. And between these years or these 17 years, Barcelona paid Jose Maria Enriquez Neireira a total of 7 million euros so he can be the consultant for a club and produce reports about the Spanish referees. Now, the reason why Barcelona are involved in this scandal is because at the time that Barcelona had hired Enrique Esteireira, he was also the vice president of the Committee of Referees. And this, of course, has prompted the prosecutor's office in Spain to investigate Barcelona for corruption, to see whether Barcelona were trying to bribe referees or trying to influence the outcome of matches through the hiring of Enrique Esteireira. Now, after several months of investigation, the prosecutor's office in Spain have uncovered that there's absolutely no evidence that Barcelona tried to bribe any referees or trying to influence the outcome of any matches through the hiring of Enrique Esteireira. And instead, the investigation have switched their course to see whether the former presidents of Barcelona had used the company of Enrique Esteireira in order to steal money from the club and launder the money through this company as well. Now you might ask, well, how can the previous Barcelona presidents like Josep Maria Bartomeu or Sandro Rosé use the, Maria, uh, the Jose Maria Enrique Esteireira company to steal money from the club? Well, it's been discovered that Barcelona had been overpaying for these technical refereeing reports that Jose Maria Enrique Esteireira was providing to Barcelona. So a way that this could be used to steal money from the club is let's say, for example, a refereeing report costs 50,000 euros, on paper, you can write down that it costs 200,000 euros. So you would give 50,000 euros to Enrique Esteireira's company, but pocket the other 150,000 euros. Now, of course, these numbers are pure examples. These are not specific numbers. And in my personal opinion, I really think that Sandro Rosé and Josep Maria Bartomeu did this with other contracts and with other companies because there are hundreds, if not thousands of examples of Barcelona overpaying for services throughout the presidencies of these two individuals. Now, the prosecutor's office in Spain is not the only body in Spain to reach the same conclusion that Barcelona did not bribe any referees or try to influence the outcome of matches through the hiring of Enrique Sneireira. The Treasury's office in Spain has also reached the same conclusion because they also conducted their own investigation when they were investigating the tax returns of Jose Maria Enrique Sneireira. Of course, the Royal Spanish Football Federation have also reached the same conclusion. And then there's UEFA who sent their own investigators to Barcelona and combed through thousands of documents of the club. And they have also found no evidence that Barcelona have tried to bribe or try to influence the outcome of matches through the hiring of Jose Maria Enriquez de Herrera. Now, despite all these organizations not finding any evidence of corruption on behalf of Barcelona, the Madrid-based media have all been circulating several articles these past few days trying to bring up the Enrique Esteira case once again and try to make it look like there's now new evidence that Barcelona did indeed try to bribe referees and try to influence the outcome of matches. Now the reason these media outlets are doing this is because there hasn't been a lot of talks about the Enrique Esteira case ever since the prosecutor's office determined that there is no evidence of corruption and instead decided to start investigating 
the still stealing of money and the laundering of money from the club. So it looks like these Madrid-based media are trying to hash up this topic once again in order to continue to throw dirt at FC Barcelona. Now, given a slew of the Enriquez Negreira articles that have been released these past few days by the Madrid-based media, today the media outlet Crónica Libre, which are an independent media outlet in Spain, released an article detailing the false evidence that Javier Tebas sent to the Spanish prosecutor's office. Now, this news was initially broken by the media outlet La Vanguardia several months ago, and I reported about it in a video several months ago. But today, Crónica Libre, unlike La Vanguardia's article, actually included the letter that Javier Tebas wrote to the, to, um, the prosecutor's office and also contains a new detail which we didn't know about in the past, which is that this false evidence or this letter written by Javier Tebas was the reason why the prosecutor's office decided to begin their investigation into Barcelona and why all the media outlets in Spain began talking about the Enrique Steyreira case. Now, to explain to you exactly what happened with this false evidence and this letter that Javier Tebas wrote to the prosecutor's office, the Spanish police were investigating a former Barcelona board member named Josep Contreras, who has already passed away. They were investigating for a separate matter from the Enrique Steyreira case. And while the police were searching Josep Contreras' home, they found a sealed envelope with a letter inside it containing handwritten notes. Now, once this envelope was opened, the note, it was, it was discovered that this note contained the name of banks and also the number of bank accounts. And it also contained three names, which were Roman, Josep Maria, and Sandro. Now, upon the discovery of this note, Javier Tebas immediately forwarded this note to the prosecutor's office in Spain with a letter where he said that this was concrete evidence that Barcelona were indeed bribing referees through the hiring of Jose Maria Enrique Steyreira. And his reasoning was that the, uh, was the three names that were included on this note. And he concluded that the name Roman must have meant Roman Gomez Ponti, which was a former Barcelona board member, that the name Sandro must have been the former Barcelona president Sandro Rosé, and that the name Josep Maria must have been the, the former Barcelona president Josep Maria Bartomeo, and Javier Tebas also concluded that all these banks, um, banks and bank account numbers must be the account numbers that Barcelona were using to bribe referees. Well, the police investigated this no and it turned out that no, none of these conclusions on behalf of Javier Tebas were true, that the name Roman did not refer to the Barcelona board member Roman Gomez Ponti. Roman referred to the personal lawyer of Josep Contreras who had written the note that the name Sandro did not refer to the former Barcelona president, Sandro Rosé. It was actually a banker who was in charge of the accounts of Josep Contreras, who again wrote the note. And finally, that the name Josep Maria was not referring to Josep Maria Bartomeo. This was simply a personal friend of Josep Contreras, who again is the one who wrote the note. So it turns out from the investigation of the police that this note was written by the deceased Josep Contreras in order to kind of put his affairs in order in case he died. So he wrote on this piece of paper all his bank accounts and what uh, bank account numbers and what banks they were located at. And of course, included the name of his personal lawyer and his personal banker. That way, if he died, his family would know where his money's at and they'd be able to recover it. And this, of course, could have all been discovered by a simple call to the Josep Contreras family by asking them, hey, do you know what these names refer to? Do you know what these account numbers refer to? And they could have easily answered that. But instead, Javier Tebas decided to jump to conclusions and send this letter to the prosecutor's office, which prompted the investigation into Barcelona and which prompted all the media outlets in Spain to report that Barcelona were indeed bribing referees and influencing matches through the hiring of, of Josep Maria, uh, Jose Maria Enrique Steyreira. Now, to make matters even worse, this news was broken several months ago by La Vanguardia, but yet there has been no investigations into Javier Tebas. No media outlets have been talking about this, and yet this is the real scandal because here we have the president of La Liga, someone who's supposed to be looking out for the best interests of all the clubs in La Liga. Here we have him using false evidence to try to get one of the biggest clubs in La Liga in trouble with the authorities. And this is absolutely disgusting. It's immoral, but more importantly, this is a crime because Javier Tebas is using false evidence in order to incriminate someone. And I really hope that Barcelona go after him once this case is over because Javier Tebas has to pay 
for what he's doing. Now, setting that Enrique Sneeda case on the side, which I have no doubt that we're gonna be talking about for quite some time, let's talk about the Barcelona players who are currently doing well during the international break. And let's specifically talk about Rafinha, who had an incredible match and an incredible performance in the match between Brazil and Bolivia, where Brazil won five to one, and when Rafinha scored a goal, provided an assist, and even participated in several plays that could have easily increased his assist count. Now, I think that this is great news that Rafinha had an incredible match with Brazil because hopefully he can bring that back to Barcelona and start performing really well for the team. And if this does happen, it's good news in two ways. First of all, this would only increase the competition between him and Lamine Yamal, who's doing also spectacularly, which means that would keep both players highly motivated and playing at the top of their form. But also the second reason why it would be good news because I really think that this would take some of the pressure off Lamine Yamal because if Rafinha is not performing and Lamine Yamal is the only one performing, this would put the entire responsibility of the right wing on his shoulders. And let's not forget that Lamine Yamal is only 16 years old and I would prefer that Rafinha would be the starter so he can take that pressure and that responsibility off the uh, the shoulders of Lamine Yamal and that way Lamine Yamal could come off as a substitute or maybe even start some matches as well without that pressure, without the responsibility, which I think would really allow him to even express himself more on the field, kind of like we saw in that match between Spain and Georgia where Lamine Yamal came on once Spain was already winning. So as a result, there was no pressure on him and we saw him do whatever he wanted on the field, including that incredible goal that he scored. Now more good news is that Ferran Torres has been called up to the Spanish team after Dani Olmo and Asensio were both injured in that match between Spain and Georgia. And uh, Ferran Torres had not been called up to the Spanish team since the Qatar World Cup. So I think this is good news because we were all seeing how Ferran Torres has improved his physical and mental state. And hopefully this call up will also help to improve his confidence so he can continue performing for Barcelona. So that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like. Also, I would like to invite all of you to please leave a comment down below, giving me all your thoughts and opinions about all the news that I share with you. And finally, I would like to invite all of you to please subscribe to the channel so you can stay current on all the latest news in regards to our beloved club, FC Barcelona. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. And as always, bis Barça.